Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Reefcaster Studio 12 saltwater tank setup. Now originally I planned on adding my first fish to the tank today, but the tank isn't quite ready for fish, so instead I'm going to add my first coral. Now I generally prefer not to add corals quite so early to a new tank, so this is very much a do as I say, not as I do kind of video, but in any event I'm going to show you the steps I've taken to get the tank ready. And the first step I took was to start the cycle. Now the Reefcaster kit comes with correctly sized bottles of bacteria and ammonium chloride that will act as food for the bacteria, so I added both of those to kick things off. Now those on their own will be totally fine and will do the job, but I personally always like to add some mature live rock when I'm setting up a reef tank, so I added a small piece of live rock that was well seeded with beneficial bacteria that had been in the sump of one of my tanks for many months. And to go belt and braces, I preceded the bio blocks that came with the Reefcaster kit. When this tank first arrived about three weeks ago, I put the blocks in the sump of my main tank to give them a bit of time to build up some beneficial bacteria. So these combined with the live rock and the bottled bacteria will mean this tank gets off to the best possible start. But because I'm adding an ammonia source, I will of course still get high ammonia levels, so I've added this Seachem Ammonia Alert Disc to keep an eye on those levels. These discs last for up to a year, and they show you instantly if there's ammonia in the water without you needing to test. And although the colour isn't very clear on this clip, you can see that it does register when it detects ammonia. And in fact the colour was very dark indeed for the first few days, indicating the high levels of ammonia I would added. And I then left the tank to settle down for a few days before I added my first coral. Now while ammonia levels that are this high will kill any fish I put in the tank, they won't do any harm to the corals. However, in the first few weeks of a reef tank, the water chemistry is a bit up and down and the nutrient levels aren't stable, which is not ideal for most corals, so I've made sure to choose hardy soft corals that will be totally fine in this environment. And I chose two zoophrags first up. They are utter chaos and laser lemons, and I've had the mother colonies of these corals in my care now for about three or four years, so they are very well adapted to aquarium conditions. The utter chaos seem to be doing really well, and were open within 24 hours, but the laser lemons are still sulking a little bit a week after I added them, although one or two polyps have started to open up a bit. Now I didn't intend to add any cleanup crew while I still had ammonia readings, but when I came down the next day after adding my corals, I noticed I'd accidentally added a dove snail that had hitchhiked in on one of my zoas. Now I have dozens of these in my main tank, and I welcome them as good free cleanup crew. So I left him in the tank for a few days to see how he got on, and after a couple of days he was doing fine, so I decided to add a few more to tackle any early outbreaks of diatoms or algae. And a few days later, I noticed I'd got my first outbreak of diatoms. Now diatoms are a totally natural part of cycling a reef tank, and are basically the bottom of the food chain, so that is very much good news for my snails. However, I wasn't expecting diatoms quite so quickly, so I decided to intervene. I tested my water levels to see what the nitrate and phosphate were like, and they came in at 6.7 parts per million for nitrates, and 0.07 for phosphates, which is totally fine at this stage, and tells me that the tank is capable of processing ammonia and turning it into nitrite, then nitrate. Which means this tank was more or less cycled, and I only have to wait for the ammonia levels to drop to zero before I can add my first fish. Although getting ammonia down to zero really is essential before adding any fish, even a hardy fish, so while it was close, it still wasn't quite ready. But because the diatoms arrived earlier than I expected, I decided to back the lights off a bit, so I turned them down from around 50% to just 8%, and I decided to do a water change, so I mixed up a large batch of new salt water and changed about 70% of the tank water. I did the water change to take the edge off the nutrients to stop them getting too high, and to remove some of the as yet unprocessed ammonia. And the beauty of a small tank like this is you can do a large water change really easily and essentially reset the tank. And I also took the opportunity to replace the filter sponge, which as you can see from the colour is already proving effective. The Reefcaster kit comes with this little filter floss shelf, which keeps the floss sitting at the top for easy access, and also allows all of the water to pass over it for maximum effectiveness. And another step I took to prepare the tank for corals was to add the Reefcaster Random Flow Generator. It's just a little nozzle that attaches to the return pump outlet, but it changes the constant flow pattern of the return pump into a slightly more random pulsing pattern. Now realistically, I'll want a power head in here long term, but this should tide me over for now. And while I'm here, I'll show you something I missed in the last video, which is a neat little temperature gauge that comes with the tank kit. 
and from which you'll notice just how much the tank temperature plummeted during the water change. Now a 5 degrees C drop is probably a little more than I'd like, but I'm never too fussed about preheating new salt water when I do a water change, and it never seems to do any harm to my corals. And fast forward a couple of days and the diatoms had dropped off, and the ammonia had dropped to zero just two weeks after I first set the tank up. Although if I hadn't added the live rock and preceded bacteria blocks, and done the water change, it would probably take another few weeks before the tank was ready to process ammonia properly. But I still want to leave the tank for at least a week before I had my first fish, because it would be a disaster if I put him in, only for the ammonia to spike back up. So instead, I added another coral. This time I decided to go for something even more hardy than my zoas, and I chose this green leather coral. Now I'm generally not a fan of most soft corals, but I think this looks absolutely fantastic. It's super bright, glows like crazy under blue lights, and crucially, it is absolutely bombproof, so it will be capable of putting up with the up and down water chemistry in this tank for the first few months. And there are loads of little crevices in the rock that comes with the reef cutter kit, so I just wedged the frag in place, et voila. Now although I've turned the lights down, these corals will be absolutely fine with the low light, so I'm in no rush to bump the lights back up to full power, and I'll aim to bump the intensity up slowly over the next month or two, so I don't just end up with a huge outbreak of algae. And because I now have zero ammonia, it means that the tank is ready for its first fish. But I'm not going to do that in this video for the reasons I mentioned earlier, so that will have to wait for the next update in two weeks time. So if you want to see what fish I've chosen and how I get on with adding it, Make sure you like and subscribe, and until next time, happy reefing.